Communication Tools. This tutorial will cover three tools, announcements, calendar or schedule tool, and messages. They're form-based, and once you're familiar with the form, you'll be able to use the tool with ease. There are several benefits to using these tools. You can push email notification from announcements. The tools are displayed on a site homepage and serve as visual reminders to your participants. You'll have a record of communications stored within your site. And finally, these tools push information to a participant's My Workspace area. Here's a typical course homepage. We've got announcements, calendar, and messages displayed with some options underneath but I want to add an announcement, so I'm going to click on the Announcements tool and click on Add. Of course, give it a title. And I've got some text that I've written in Word, so I'm going to copy from Word, and then I need to select the Paste from Word icon. This is really important because Word has some custom formatting codes in it. So this will remove the codes but preserve the formatting. I can come down and determine that I want to specify the date to send this announcement out. So for example, your first day of class, if you're preparing your site in advance, you can actually create that welcome announcement and set it up to send to all of your participants on that day. I'm going to show everything to you now for the sake of this tutorial. All right, so there's my announcement. If I wanted to remove it, I would click there and update. Now when I go to the home page, here's where options comes in handy. I can set how this will display to my students. Now I want the entire body of the message to display. Great, let's go to calendar. We're going to add an event. And this is another form that you just go in and fill out. Give it the time. And I'm going to attach a document to this calendar event. These are little icons that will indicate the type of event. They're set by default. You can't change them, but you can use them if you wish. Now I need to browse to my desktop to upload that document. And there it is, and I'm just going to continue. Save it. There's my June event. Now we're looking at this by month view, but many people prefer to list events in a list. So you can set the default for your site participants. I'm going to set the list view as the default. And there's that document. Now if I go back to the home page, I can see that event displayed. There it is. And I can tell that there is an attachment by the little paperclip icon. And if I scroll down, I can actually click and download that document directly from the calendar. And that's handy. So let's go to messages. You're going to compose. You can select by role or you can select by individual student to multiple select. You're going to control click. I click send a copy to um, their email addresses and then type my message. Now before I send, I check. We need to have this clicked in order for it to go outside of Sakai. Otherwise, the messages are internal to Sakai and they're stored in Sakai. So I can see there's a message I sent. Now when a student logs into Sakai, she'll see an announcement, a calendar event, and a new message displayed in her My Workspace area as well as in the course when she logs into it. In summary, the layout of the site homepage is set, but it does show recent activity in the tools. If you want to send a message outside of Sakai to somebody's email address, you need to check that little checkbox. Finally, the content that you put into these tools will also push to a participant's My Workspace area. Thanks very much for watching this video and be sure to check out our other Sakai tutorials.